guys, say, last episode, remember when we said, don't be afraid to let your body die? <laughs> well, you could have avoided all this. <laughs> no, we are on our the last, basically the last 10 minutes of our most recent episode before this one. Uh, we talked about um, how you need to just be, just steal yourself and be totally dismissive of spurious allegations of anti-Semitism when they're directed at Jeremy Corbyn. And then on Monday, I woke up and realized, damn, we got the wrong character because it's Ilhan Omar this week has yeah. won that lottery. And in, in probably even dumber than the Jeremy Corbyn anti-Semitism bullshit. Well, I mean, the, the fact that it's happening on Twitter inherently makes it dumber. That's for sure. Well, I'm yeah. just I'm glad that we've set a precedent. Lobbyists have never used money to influence anyone. Yeah. No, definitely they, and not. That's not step, what lobbies do. No, Second they just th- really enjoy lobbies. They yeah. love being in lobbies. <laughs> Yeah, second thing, you guys, you know, yeah. I think I support Palestinians more than anyone. And you know that because I say that after for 40 tweets, I just call somebody the moral equivalent to Himmler (laughs) for saying that APAC has influence on people, you know? Then I say, let's support Palestinians, y'all. Let's raise awareness of Palestine. Well, I got to say, like, uh, that, that, this, this whole idiotic controversy was going on because, uh, Ilan Omar, uh, said in tweets replying to what is it minority whip Kevin McCarthy it was over the issue yes, of you McCarthy. know of, of lobbying and then someone was like you know who makes him do that and she was like APAC it's all about the Benjamins and people and that that that, that led to about t- the dumbest 24 hours Ooh. on Twitter in, in recent memory yeah with just people real brain death hours. just like if she had been describing like I don't know the US auto manufacturing lobby or the NRA or, or any, any like, like the, the corn lobby yeah so APAC's the only lobby that doesn't use money that's amazing do they have glamoring powers? Look, it becomes more anti-Semitic. <laughs> and exactly. And then like, I mean, and then there's just like just a cascade of people projecting this sort of anti-Semitic intent. And it's like, oh, no, no. What she said about APAC is true. But she's using tropes. God, you can't see. use tropes. She's using tropes, tropes about, tropes about, tropes about or face. just that w- trope about Jews just throwing money around left and right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, it's, that's why they say like uh, the Jewish car, it stops on a dime and then uses it for lobbying purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a couple. There, there's a couple different tacks people took with this. Uh, again, w- responding to Ilan Omar's flatly, objectively true just statement of, about how lobbying works in D.C. and how APAC has a huge influence in D.C. that is largely dependent on how much money they spend. Uh, th- there's a couple tacks people took on this. The first one, the dumber people uh, will, will just say, are you actually saying that APAC gives money to Congress people? Because that's illegal. <laughs> and, you know, when you saw that, you could just write that person off immediately. You know they're bullshitting. You know they're lying to you because you know those people understand full well that APAC, of course, does not directly give money to political candidates, but they manage an entire network of PACs that do just that. Right. The other one was just, just the people who pretended that they want to agree with her and just be like, actually, yeah. Uh, APAC is bad and we need to speak up against them but you just can't use certain tropes or like my experience as a uh, extremely well off Jewish person living in America you need to you need to step back and listen to my experience and this is hurtful what she or the people who wanted to agree with her but they had to hold out this idea that she harmed the community in some way now keep in mind these are people who are not speak for any community they're just talking on twitter about how they feel it's not like they're coming to you as a representative of like a labor union or, or any other group with constituents they're just saying i've appointed myself um spokesperson for this community that you've harmed in some vague way and you know we need to talk about that and this is exactly what i was saying on last week's show is that like no no you can't no, don't even countenance that because that's even more bullshit than the idea that the idea that Ilan Omar's statements harmed anyone in any way is even more bullshit than the idea that APAC doesn't give money to politicians. All right. The greatest quote ever about Twitter is it was applied for a certain situation, but it's universally true. Dog boner. Michael Hale said it. He said, when a celebrity dies on Twitter, it's like watching a group of the same 20 people trying to jam a single turd down one clogged toilet. <laughs> and... But that is just every day now. It's every day because every day there's Donald Trump will tweet like, Max Baucus is so handsome. He could be in the movies. Too bad the Muslims want to put him in a headscarf. <laughs> and people will start like a at midnight hashtag game or something or mm-hmm. just jamming the same turd down that yeah. same toilet. And it's just the most disgusting, 
display of social climbing and de- and networking and just jockeying to be seen by like either a Sam B writer or like whoever manages hiring at Cap. Who there could represent anyone? No one. They're just solely representing themselves to either get a job or get some awful serotonin rush from people liking their dog shit filth that they put out there. <laughs> uh no one there can speak. They can barely speak for themselves. They probably should. <laughs> yeah, they need a conservator, honestly. Yeah, I to mean, leave their I, homes. That stuff doesn't even bother me as much. It's the kind of like totally guileless response of an attempt at good faith from nice rubes <laughs> who lack any sense of cynicism. Like, how do they not just walk out of their door? And meet someone saying, hey, can I hold your purse for a second? It looks really nice. Like, how has that not happened to them? The AOC response to it was, girl, you have got to wise up. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It was a, she's quote tweeting uh, Max Berger says, truly wild how many non-Jews feel comfortable telling me what is and isn't anti-Semitism. If you're not a Jew, please try to listen to Jews sharing how they feel. Not all the reactions are in bad faith. And she's like responding, lots of people here proclaiming to be woke, trying to police communities on what they are slash aren't allowed to be upset by. Oh, my God. Am I on Am I on a, like a fan fiction community? Girl, you've Mulan? got to get your shit together. You <laughs> have is, got to get your shit together. I was, and only you Jew, broke ranks. The only she Jew. broke ranks. And if she keeps doing yeah. that, she's done for. Yeah. That's it. She won't make it. Yeah. She won't make it. She's you pretty much all them. alone out you there anyway. You can't please them all. The only Jew I listen to is uh, Felix. Yeah. <laughs> well, he I doesn't speak, let you for, not listen. I speak for everyone. I represent. <laughs> I re- my experience is universal. If I say, I, you know, I feel unsafe, like when certain people say that a certain brightly colored battle royale game is for children, <laughs> and I present evidence that many the median age of the pro gamers who play it is actually about twenty three. Uh, you know, I feel unsafe when Matt says that. <laughs> but no, I mean, it was. I think it's just the phrasing, I, look, though. Police communities? What does that mean? Means First of all, there are communities that are literally right, overly yeah. police, so calm down with that shit. Yeah. And then second of all, I like calling saying like I don't believe you is not policing someone. Also, how these is people this, need to get like this, some backbone. This standpoint concept just doesn't hold up. Because, no, it's absurd. Okay, because okay, Jews listening. are not a hive. Exactly. Night. It's like I'm listening to a Jew. Okay, but what about all right? It's Norman Finkelstein. That's the Jew I'm going to listen yeah. to. Yeah. Right. That is my chosen Jew. Yeah. Well, I mean, st- standpoint theory. Felix, it's Norman Finkelstein. We already decided. Shh. Well, no, but it already fell apart here because the same people that are like, you have to listen to black women. You have to listen to yeah, right. vote for black women, support black women. Support black women. I don't know what that means, first of all. But, okay, I don't know what Representative Omar is. <laughs> She's not a black woman. But right. just the moment she opens her mouth about something that makes you uncomfortable, she's there's a weird thing that happens there where the moment she says it, She's David Duke. Yeah. She's Anders Breivik. But then the moment that you finally fucking isolate her and try to terrify her and fucking beat her down and as a member of her own very small caucus, I like fucking abandon her. Oh, she's fine yeah. now. Well, what the fuck? Yeah. Was it was it was it was it unapproachably anti-Semitic? Well, if it was, then why is it okay if she's like, "Oh, my bad." Why? Cuz she's learning. She's and that's learning. the that's the that's the really nauseous noxiously. Yeah, she's condescending learning if you prostrate your prostrate right. yourself before yeah. like the crowd, then you know they'll leave you alone for a second. Yeah, but for yeah. a well, second. That's the thing is that any the people I get most. I mean, all the cynics and the and the and the the husbaris and the scumbags. Like you're doing your job. Congratulations. Go collect your paycheck. But the people who profess to honestly care about the Palestinian cause and stuff like that. And they're like, but we can't use tropes. Like, motherfucker, do you think that there's a trope that exists on Earth that you can evoke to criticize Israel that won't get called anti-Semitic? That does not exist. There's no language for criticizing Israel that will not get you called anti-Semitic by somebody, probably in a fucking bunker in Tel Aviv. And, uh, Corey, I mean, uh, Ryan Grimm over at a piece in The Intercept about that very little seen documentary about the Israel lobby in D.C., that sort of came and went after a big struggle with whether it even be put on air anywhere where they have these APAC guys on tape bragging about how much their money spends in fucking DC. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is what lobbyists fucking do. And APAC happens to be a pretty big and powerful one. However, I don't think it's like a, as far as APAC and Israel goes, I think it's like, I don't know. Like it's, I think U S policy is directing it, not vice versa. 
Well, yeah, Israel is our client state. Yeah, and no, like, right. 100%. Like, like, they're like, they're like, it's not like the, it's not like APAC is like making, no. uh, you know, America do this. America, like, APAC is a front for America. Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. Israel as our client state. So if you want to, you know, pin that down, be welcome to it. But they're a malign influence any way you cut it, yeah. and they should be addressed as such. But the best is, is that they put out APAC put out a fundraising email off of this, yep. saying. This horrible anti-Semitism about how we use Jewish money to influence things in Washington. Give us we your really Jewish money. We really use some Jewish money right now. <laughs> I mean, well, are they just, I mean, maybe they're just fundraising because, you know, I'm feeling unsafe, hit my PayPal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay, you, you want to talk about? Care. They're not going to spend that. That's the, yeah, that's all going to Sephora. That's what this whole argument was about. Yeah. They're not going to spend it. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, they're going to Sephora with but, that. Again, uh, Omar is being targeted because thus far she has been a very courageous voice in American politics holding elected office that are saying things that are flatly true about the world and America's place in it that cannot be acknowledged by an official D.C. And that is why the Democratic leadership um, condemned her immediately. Well, that's about to get beaten out of her because she's all alone and all of these supposed, you know, supporters are going to hang her out to fucking dry because they've got no backbone. I'd like to see... uh, so I'd like to see any statement from Bernie Sanders on yeah. this, let Come alone on, AOC's statements already have not exactly inspired confidence about... Don't you know, hold your honestly, breath on Bernie. Honestly, if if she had said nothing... It would have been better. It would have been better. Yeah. Like, saying nothing is still better than... She fucking threw it to the wolves. Because this is, And she's like, look, here's the way out of this. We're going to apologize. No, never apologize. That is the Chapo creed. Oh, it's true. And, and, here, and here's, and here's the, the, the net effect of that, Amber... Just today, we got to see Ilan Omar do something genuinely unheard of in D.C. politics, which is confront Elliot fucking Abrams to his face about the El Mozote massacre Speaking that he helped previous cover episodes. up in El Salvador to his fucking face. And it pissed him off. Like, you could tell everyone in that room was like, how dare she? And she, well, she's, first of all, I love she called. I want to play that clip, actually. First of all. I love that she calls him Mr. Adams. Chapo rule number one, never get anyone's names right. <laughs> Chapo rule number two, always be disrespectful to yes. these people. And getting in people's names wrong on purpose or by accident is a fun way to do that. <laughs> but watch that fucking clip because it is, it's like Haley's fucking comment in D.C. to see some fucking scumbag piece of shit mass murderer like Elliot Abrams get his coat ruffled for even half a second by some woman that he would put in a fucking camp yeah. if he had even half the fucking inclination or power to do so. Um, thank you all for being here and thank you for your uh, testimonies. Mr. Adams, in 1991, you pleaded guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress regarding your involvement in the Iran Cortra affair, for which you were later barred by President George H.W. Bush. I fail to understand. Uh, why members of this committee or the American people should find any testimony that you give uh, today to be truthful. If I can respond to that. Uh, um, it wasn't a question. Uh, I, it On was Feb- that was it not, was, that was not a question. I that was sure. the, I, well, I reserve the right I'm to sorry. my time. It is not, it is not right. That was members not a question. Members of this committee can attack On February a 8th, who is not permitted to reply. That That was not a question. Thank you for your participation. On February 8th, 1982, you testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee about U.S. policy in El Salvador. In that hearing, you dismissed as communist propaganda report about the massacre of El Mosote, in which more than 800 civilians, including children as young as two years old, were brutally murdered by U.S. trained troops. During that massacre, some of those troops bragged about raping a 12-year-old girl before they killed them. Girls before they killed them. You later said that the U.S. policy in El Salvador was a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you still think so? From the day that President Duarte was elected in a free election to this day, El Salvador has been a democracy. That's a fabulous achievement. 
Yes or no, do you think that massacre was a fabulous achievement that happened under our watch? That is a ridiculous question. And I yes or no? No. I, I I'm will sorry, Mr. Chairman. I will Chairman, take that as a yes. I am not going to respond to that kind of personal attack, which is not a question. Yes or no, would you support an armed faction within Venezuela that engages in war crimes, crimes against humanity or genocide, if you believe they were serving U.S. interest, as you did in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Nicaragua? I am not going to respond to that question. I'm sorry. I can count on one fucking hand the amount of times in 40 years something like this has happened in Congress. Maxine Waters questioning the CIA mm. years ago about uh, drug trafficking in South America. This is actually, this is more than 40 years. The fucking church committee. And and what? What? You would have to go back to fucking Paul Wellstone, maybe. It, it, it's, it is. Yeah, don't go to any uh, small planes, uh, <laughs> Omar. Well, maybe. I mean, um, uh, but, uh, but, it, but, it, it is, it is. You see why, though. You see, you see why, why you the see knives why are out they, for her. Yeah, yeah. You see why they're so fucking out for her. She is the bravest elected official out of this current crop. Unquestionably. Oh, Unquestionably. And this, the other thing that this shows is you see, you saw today why they have to clap her. And also, you see the end result of taking any of these spurious yes. accusations seriously because what happened, well, what happened? after she right fucking we'll calls see, out we'll this see. blood-soaked right murderer? We'll see how long she lasts and then people will be like, you know, well, she was really great, but she took a rightward turn towards the end. It's like, you know what? You wouldn't hold up. No one would. But the end result, of course, today, after this brilliant moment of, you know, giving, making him feel uncomfortable for like 10 seconds, which is more than he's fucking used to. Yeah. He should feel a lot worse than that. Yeah, he should be in a uh, fucking tiger cage. Uh, is immediately... All the people who are like, mm, I think she should be more careful. She's tropes. We should really have. Tropes. She shouldn't Fuck use off. tropes, or we need to have a more nuanced discussion. Guess what? Everyone, all, all the neoconservative right is like, I wonder what it is about Elliot Abrams, <laughs> the son of Jewish parents, that makes her so upset. I'm going to yep. read this to you right now. Disgraceful ad hominem attacks by Ilhan Omar on oh. my CFR org colleague Elliot Abrams. She doesn't seem to realize he is a leading advocate of human rights and democracy, <laughs> not a promoter of genocide. More evidence of the loony left I caution Democrats about from one Max Boot. The maximum amount of boot. Uh, but yeah, this is the end result of that. You can't yeah, oh. talk. You can't call out a literal war criminal. Because, oh, yeah, it's anti-Semitic. Yeah. It's anti he's, She's using tropes yeah. about Jews and mass so murder. I'm going to DM <laughs> Elliot and see if he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, like, if Eichmann had only pulled out nice ad hom at, in Jerusalem, he might have gotten off. This is the end result of it, because, like, there, there is no way that you can um, uh, acknowledge these truths about America's foreign policy or even our domestic policy uh, without people coming to cut your throat and they're going to do it to you in exactly this way, yep. which is what I said uh, just on Sunday about fucking Jeremy Corbyn. And guess what? They gave you an object lesson in that this week with uh, Ms. Omar. You can't. I, everyone wants to be fucking nuanced. Fuck off. There's yeah. no fucking nuance. There's people just are liars. It's, it's just. Yeah, there is an absolute truth. Yes. too. Like and, you don't have to listen to everyone's feelings. And I know that sounds very facts. Don't care about your feelings. But you know what? They kind of don't. Or just because something is offered in good faith doesn't mean I have to take it or the person yeah. advancing it seriously. Yeah. I, yeah. I fucking don't. And mo most of this was in bad faith, but I think like even more sickening is the people who were in good faith. Right, like, yeah. We need to, uh, I, I think, you know, credit and, you know, solidarity, you know, must be had with Ilan Omar. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like this is the reason they want her to strip her of her committee. Someone has to or she'll be fucking right wing in a year, you know? Uh, and this is why they want to strip her of her committee thing is so she doesn't get the opportunity to fucking call out Elliot Abrams. I mean, fuck calling out to just tell the truth to yeah. his fucking evil face for one time yeah. in his Are life. Are we really going to use that trope, his evil face? Wow. There you go. Wow, well. There you go. Who uh, has yeah. an evil face? Uh, classic anti-Semitic caricatures. <laughs> there you go. Fuck off. Spare me your experiences and your fucking feelings about this shit. Fucking... Hey, I'm going to use the phrase. I'm going to use another trope. Never bend the knee to these fucking people, <laughs> even slightly. Yeah. Do not even bow your head or wink. It's not a it's, slightly. It's not. It's not a fucking bull session. Uh, you know. It's not. It's not hanging out in the quad where everyone wants to be reasonable. Like, there are real stakes here. You know. Maybe not to the specific 
maybe not to your tweets, but like the the general t- uh, contours of these arguments. This is life or death. Learn to identify people who are not on your side. Just because someone is, you know, nice to you but mean to the waiter, it doesn't mean they're nice. You know, I'll put it into perspective for you. If people who are ostensibly on your side because their display name is something like I want Gritty to corn cob Charlie Kirk or something. Oh, oh God. Someone oh. who will probably be raising money for a Republican candidate in 10 years. Uh, they are using an apartheid client state of the United States as a wedge issue against someone who wants your life and the life of your friends to be better. There you go. Very easy. That's how to look for it. Okay. Hey, I hate to be right all the time, but... I yep. must. I must continue. All right, moving on to someone else who uh, most definitely does not want your life to get any better, and basically, 